Perfect. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know, I know, I have been MIA for a while and I apologize for that. For those wondering, I have been waiting for Hogwarts Legacy to release and ever since early launch I have been grinding away and have fallen in love with this game. It is currently February 15th at like 6 a.m. while I'm recording this and I have 94 hours on Steam for this game and I've 100%ed the game already. It only took 76 hours in game time to do this however but I love the world and battle arenas too much not to keep playing it. So, here are my top five tips to becoming a better wizard, whether you choose to be dark or light in this world. Real quick, however, make sure you give me a thanks by slapping that subscribe button. Now, let's hop into it right away. Number one is going to be the Merlin Trials. Make sure you get these done as fast or as soon as possible because getting these done as quickly as possible is vital considering the challenge completion for these allows you to carry more gear at once if you haven't already discovered carrying gear on your person is the only place to do so you cannot store it in a chest your common room your mounts broom or any other place you can think of so you need as much room as possible so you can have heaps to sell or to sift through to determine which will be best for you as you're going to progress now, there are a total of 95 trials in the game, so don't worry about not having certain spells too early since there are simple ones like using Lumos, which you get so early in the game, or ones where you simply shoot them with basic casts. Number two is using Revelio on the Broom. If you have trouble finding Merlin trials or other landmarks or want a quick and easy way to do so, and you don't want to do it on foot, then I have you covered. Simply hop on your broom and use Revelio. It will show you icons of bandit caps, Merlin trials, treasure vaults, and so much more from what looks like miles away. Now you can be able to explore fast and efficiently. And if you upgrade Revelio, this just doubles the effect. Number three will be plants and potions farming. Now some of you may not want to bother collecting things for plants and potions the old fashioned way so the best course of action is to set up a beautiful room of requirement and here is my room and the most efficient way I have found. Alright so here's the potion and plant set up. There's only six potions. Uh, I have this set up here to show you. There's only six potions in the game. You have green, gray, red, white, blue and purple. Green heals you. The gray one uh, gives you more defense. Red is more offense. White invisibility. Blue is reduces your spell cooldowns. And purple is you stun people that you damage. So what happens is we're going to cook this one up. So you're going to cook your potions. You can have seven potion tables, whether they're the single pots or the triple pots or double pots, whatever. Uh, so I have seven tables going. There's only six potions, so one of them is going to be doubled up. I color coded them as well, so green is for the green potions. We've got two of those. Purple for the purple, blue for the blue, red for red, gray for gray, and white for the invisibility. For plants, we've got some set up down here and we had to think what was the most important ones. Of course, you're just going to stack your fertilizers so that you can use them for whichever plants that you think you're going to need double yields for. Usually I use them on the attacking plants like venomous tentacula. Uh, Chinese comp chomping cabbage or the mandrakes because these only grow one in each pot so you can double those up with the fertilizer you got five mandrakes going you got three Chinese chomping cabbage two ven venomous tentaculous shrivel frig fruit you need that for some potions so if you use that uh, those potions a lot you can have three of those going for the green potions you're gonna need dittany leaves so you've got a whole table of five small pots for the dittany leaves and then for the other five pot table that I have, you got not grass sprig three times for potions and then two mallow sweet leaves so that we can have a good supply of these because there's 95 Merlin trials in the game. So if you're going for the challenges for Merlin trials, uh, you can get those there. Or if you're just trying to get all 95 of the Merlin trials, you'll have plenty of mallow sweet leaves. Uh, and then two flux sweet stems, which need to be in large pots apparently. So we put them in here, uh, and those are for potions as well. We also have the random plants that come out of the chopping tables. And uh, because I'm so full on potions, I didn't really need these, but we have these as well. So these give you random potions every like 10 minutes or something. But yeah, that's it. I just love the plants and potions, mainly the plants, because my first playthrough I got put in Hufflepuff. 
And you know, we just love the herbology, so I went crazy with it. Number four, spells with hidden combo uses. If you are like me, and you took as long as possible to use your talents points for useless things like extra spell sets, right? Right? No, just me? Well, this is how I figured out multiple spells can combine to become other spells once you have learned them all. The two most used ones by myself was using Accio in my combat. Come to find out, it doubles as Wingardium Leviosa. And I never need to equip Wingardium Leviosa ever again because Accio turns into it. The same can be said for Confringo, which not only doubles as Incendio, but then triples as Benbarda later once you learned that. This is super handy when exploring or completing puzzles while in combat or not having to swap over and over. And you also don't need to spend talent points in those extra spell sets if you don't need to or want to because once you click the button to equip new spells, everything else pauses around you anyways. And last but not least, number five, Arresto Momentum on Animals. The game gives you the advice to use Leviosa and immediately I was like, nah, I'm going to do my own thing here. So if you're having a tough time nabbing those beasts or just want an easier way to do so, then just hit them with the rest of momentum and suck those furry beasts up into the bag and then head on over to the shop to sell them because we're a fifth year, 15 year old wizard child. So this isn't poaching. It's just early signs of entrepreneurship. All right, that's it. That's the first five tips I would give anyone who hasn't played Hogwarts Legacy or maybe wants to get into it or maybe is having a tough time with it and you know you just want to be a little bit better or maybe you just want to do things a little bit more efficiently outside of the combat and all that stuff because maybe you're one of those people that just doesn't like to explore as much. I personally do. I actually had like 100% of the map covered before I even got 50% through the game and the challenge I got like 100% on the challenges as quickly as possible. Uh, um, so let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. I've got some other games that have been gifted to me as well, so we can check those out. They're nowhere near as good as Hogwarts Legacy, I'm guessing. But of course, you know, the Wizarding Universe is one of my favorite things in life. So that's why I love this game so much. Anyways, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let me know which tip was your favorite. Or if you have any other tips that I missed or you think are in need of sharing, let me know in the comments below. Until then... Keep hitting people with spells. Oh, hello there. It's Blue. I'm a terrible dancer, so ignore that version of me on the screen and listen to my voice when I say thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and of course, click on another video of mine. I heard you'll like those over there. They're pretty good.